Hello, today I'm going to be working with you on the Sinfonia Viola Audition excerpt. Now this excerpt is from Bizet's Carmen, Suite Number no. 2, and it's the ninth movement of that, the Chanson du Toreador. Now this is a really tricky excerpt for many reasons. And because of that, I want you to take a moment and pause this video and write in your measure numbers so that when I refer to a measure, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Now you don't have to measure every one of them, but just along the, the outside edge. So take a moment to do that. Okay, so hopefully you've numbered your measures and that we have the same amount of measures, so this should be interesting. Um, along the side of mine, I have 1, 6, 10, 15, 19, and 23, if you want to check your measure counting work. So, one of the things that makes this excerpt very tricky is the key signature. B flat, E flat, A flat, and D flat. Now, the D flats are, are maybe some of the trickier ones to, to remember. So also, when you have a minute, uh, take time to write in more flats than you think that you need. And with this excerpt, it is of the utmost importance that you always start it slow, that you start practicing it very, very slow. You have no idea how many times that I have told people to practice things slow, but they really aren't practicing them slow. Like, I literally mean... that slow or even slower for a while. And of course, building it up through your practice session tempo-wise, uh, but it is really important so that you can start to make part of your muscle memory all the shifts that you and your teacher have written in, all of the flats in this piece, and also just to really, really uh, get a sense of all the chromaticism, all the dynamic markings, because there are a lot of sudden dynamic markings in this piece as well. So if you haven't also written in or circled your dynamic markings, take a moment to pause this video and do that as well. So I'm going to perform this excerpt for you very under tempo uh, for two reasons. The first reason being that the excerpt is very hard and I want a chance myself to play it slowly through for you, but also for you to get a sense of maybe some ideas for fingerings and to see that even though I am playing it very slow that I am meticulously counting my rests which is very important in an audition situation. And also that, uh, I guess this is more than two reasons, but also just so that you can maybe hear some of the dynamics and just we can get a sense of this together. And maybe you can even play it along with me slowly if, if you want to. Uh, let me set up my metronome here. So this right now is at, uh, Quarter note at 80. And I will count us uh, in for three beats and then we, I will start. One, two, three. <laughs>
So a lot of details to work out in this one. So I already mentioned to you the challenge of the key signature and making sure that you have also some great fingerings written in, some lots of flats, actually not some flats, a lot of them, as many as you can, can, can write in without uh, overcrowding your page. So I want to bring your attention to the runs, the triplet runs that happen in almost every line of this excerpt. So it's really important that your left hand is really clean and crystal clear in these runs. And so there's a few different ways to practice that. And hopefully some of these ways your teacher has already recommended to you. And, uh, and I'm sure that they have. And I would love to be that second voice of urging you to please try these extra practice techniques. Like practicing slow is great, but also just elevating your mind and your muscle memory out of what is actually on the page can really go a long way in taking this excerpt where you want it to go. So I'm going to use the first triplet run and at the end of the first line as an example. So this practice technique you may have already become familiar with uh, through your uh, adventures with viola We'll put it that way. So one of the ways that I would really recommend practicing this is with lots of rhythms. And so what rhythms do is that it gives our left hand, each of the fingers that we will be using, a chance to shine. So I'll take you through a few of the rhythmic opportunities that, that we can do with this. So the first one, I'm going to just do this run separate bows, but I'm just going to do long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. So I'm going to erase the actual rhythm from my mind and just kind of long, short, long, short every other note. Okay, and that's going to sound like this. <laughs> faster until your fingers really really learn the notes maybe add in the slurs and really really make when you do it with the slur your fingers have to lift up with strength and go down with strength as well so just so that we really feel clean and almost like robotic in our fingers so that was long short long short now let's do short long short long so that's another way. And since these triplets are groups of three, then after just kind of first uh, doing the long, short, long, short, and short, long, short, long, then I would recommend you in every group of three now, we're going to do long, short, short, long, short, short, long, short, short. faster separate bows, maybe even add in the slur, uh, accent the, the uh, long note with your bow a little bit too to help make that clean. And so then after we do long, short, short, long, short, short, we are going to do elongating the second group of each three. So long, sh long, short, excuse me, I the middle of each group of three is going to be long. Short, long, short, short, long, short, short, long, short. It's very hard to, to say that. Short, long, short, short, long, short. This one's tricky. And then especially when we add in the slur. And then the last iteration that we could do is short, short, long, short, short, long to elongate the third note. encourage you to think of this as sort of like viola yoga for your fingers different positions that we can and I don't mean fit positions like first second third position not that kind of position but but different um, 
again, ways for our brain to latch onto each finger and really kind of get that into the DNA of, of, of our left hand, of, of where we want our fingers to go. And then build up the tempo, do those again. Um, and then I think that you'll find that it actually will make your runs very clean in the long run. We want them to be really clean. We definitely don't want these runs to sound like it's just something, a made up flourish from, uh, from start to finish. It needs to be clean triplets. Yeah, da, 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 like that. So these triplets happen with different notes all throughout this excerpt. So I would take the time to really go through and clean up those triplets with using rhythms. Now, something else that's tricky about this excerpt, and I mentioned the dynamics a little bit, but is in the, is the fact that, for instance, in measure 16, we have a subito pianissimo on the downbeat. But the two eighth notes right before that and at the end of measure 15 are fortissimo. So one way that you can practice this sort of extreme dynamic contrast is to put a big fake rest in between those two moments. So I'm gonna play the last two eighth notes of measure 15 and then the downbeat of measure 16. I'll do it again. So the reason why I'm putting the big rest is so that I can feel in my body the release of the tension that I use to do the fortissimo. And so then we will end up decreasing that amount of rest or pause in between so that when we are finally playing it through, whether it's under tempo or up to tempo, that again, the word muscle memory, I say this word a lot, that the muscle memory of what that release of tension to the pianissimo feels like just happens automatically and we don't have to do anything super special with our bow or our technique in general to get that pianissimo. So another area that that happens is right at rehearsal A and also on the downbeat of measure 24, for example. So those are a couple of spots where you could really bring out the contrast between fortissimo and pianissimo. So, uh, besides just also having some really solid fingerings in for this uh, and practicing it very slow, I recommend you practicing this excerpt backwards. Now, I don't really mean like playing the notes backwards, that would sound really weird, but doing something called backwards chaining, where maybe you play the last couple of measures, you do them until they're sounding really good, and then you add in the two measures before that. So then you're playing the last four measures. And then add in the two measures before that until you backwards chain yourself all the way to the beginning of the excerpt. Now this is just a different brain space than always starting your excerpt from the very beginning. Because then what happens when we always start from the beginning and we're getting some good work done in the opening, then all of a sudden, you know, maybe it's time for our chemistry class Zoom meeting or, or our dad wants us to come and help make dinner, whatever the case may be. But uh, not only constraints of time, but also it's really good for your brain to practice backwards like that because then your brain, once you get to the beginning of the excerpt, there's just this calm that comes subconsciously when your brain knows what is coming next, as opposed to this anxiety of like, oh my gosh, what weird scales or D flats are coming up soon that, that I didn't practice yet enough, that sort of thing. So practice your excerpts backwards. Okay, so I'm going to do this excerpt now for you a little up more up to tempo. I'm gonna put it on uh, 100 right now instead of doing it all the way at 108 and hopefully I can bring out the dynamic changes hopefully my triplet slurs are, are as clean as I can make them but also with all those technical things in mind we also want to make this as musical as possible so this chanson du toreador it's a very flashy piece and all those runs we want to think imagine a toreador's cape flourishing in in the in the sunlight and then when we are uh at measure 10 for instance those really rhythmic spots that that's really staying really in tempo really piano count your rests and that we are showing the person listening to our audition that we know okay the violas are not in the spotlight right now look at me i'm accompanying the orchestra so well and counting the best that i can so without further ado let's 
do Chanson du Toreador at quarter note equals 100. One, two, three. 